high time my oppo and I had another crack at a proper job instead of this television malarkey. For this one, I took Adam home. Well, Adam, welcome to the black country. I suppose your management dressed like that. You go in the offices, I'm going to get my hands dirty. individual castings of up to about a hundred kilograms yes well if you send us something we'll get our guys to work on it okay thanks bye now a casting company makes machinery parts it all starts with a technical drawing like this one which gets sent to us we make a pattern from it like this cost between six hundred and two and a half thousand pounds depending on the complexity and the finished product is this this is a, an engine part from an Aston Martin it cost about 20 pounds for one of these but General cost is between £700 and £3,000 per tonne, depending on the complexity of it all. Now, this is an industry which is just a shadow of its former self. There used to be some 2,000 foundries in the UK. There's now just 250. And their output has collapsed from 3.2 million tonnes to just 1.1 million tonnes. Nevertheless, here at Cradley Castings, we're going strong. We've got 52 employees, and Adrian's just one of them doing the dirty work well, I'm here in my right and proper place. Can I have coffee for one, please? Thank you. What are you doing in my chair? These are yours. This is the uh, this is the raw material then, basically. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's it's a bit old and knackered. Can't you get any decent new stuff? Well, no, I'm afraid no, it's, it's all down to price, actually. You see, yeah. Adrian, all down to price. So what? This, this is a, just an old engine block. That's an old engine block. We we buy scrap as an engine block because we know it's a, a grade uh, 250 or better. So we right. know it's a high quality iron. But you all see. this rust doesn't matter. That's just no, burns no. off that, in the furnace. That melts down. Yes, that's okay. right. Okay, and, and this stuff. This is a bit of steel scrap that we put in. Yeah. Uh, again, because the. Uh, Analysis is known of that. Yeah, you know what that is. And uh, this is actual pig iron. Pig iron, that's right, yeah. yeah and th that's this comes from Russia, doesn't it? Well, yeah, we get quite a bit from Russia, yeah. Uh, we get it from various parts of uh, the world, really. Uh, but it's probably very competitive in Russia. Well, so what we... about British steel? How can it be cheaper to bring this all the way from Russia? It weighs a ton. Well, and you buy it from British steel. We used to be very patriotic and buy from British steel, but they were being undercut by quite a bit by uh, the importers. And at the end of the day, sadly, British Steel stopped making pig iron about seven or eight years ago. So we have no choice now. We have to buy from abroad. Right, now, we can get all this and uh, whack it in the furnace, basically. That's it, yeah, that's right. right. Any tips? You're not follow it in, do you? I'm not going to uh, No, no, don't. As long as you don't fall in, it's a bit warm. All right, OK. Ben, so I'll just whack it in there, then. That's right, yeah. Right, if I do follow it in and my boots disappear down, can you make a little casting in my image? Yeah, that'll be OK. There'll be a small charge a small for it, though. Charge, right. Yeah. The producer can pick that up. Here you go. Have you ever got your fingers caught in that? No, and I don't think I'd like to either. I've had the occasional burn, but uh, nothing major. Uh, how, long, how long have you been here, then? 10, maybe 11 years. Uh, and what are the pros and cons of working in a place like this? It's quite a dangerous place, isn't it? It's uh, day too bad in the winter, keeps you nice and warm, but unfortunately it has the uh, opposite effect in the summer. In the summer, it just kills you, does it? You're just yeah, sweating all day? all the while. So I suppose that because it's dirty work, the rates of pay must be a lot better than other work you could get around here. Yeah, it's a uh, great advantage. It's day two, but it's the best job I've had anyway. So how many more years are you going to do here? I don't know, as long as they have me, I suppose. I'm quite happy at the moment. I don't want to be cheeky, but I notice you're quite thin on top, aren't you? Uh, you, did, you, didn't lose, uh, you didn't lose that in a nasty accident here, did you? No, no, no. it's just, just old age catching up with me, there it is. <laughs> I was never any good 
at sandcastles on the beach, but I'm absolutely flaming brilliant at this. What I'm making here is the core, which basically is the mould for the hollow bit inside the metal casting. I'll busy myself with this. Adam's busy over there. It's piecework, so we've got to work quickly. Well, the working day starts here at about 6 a.m., goes through to 2.30 in the afternoon. Unskilled labour in this profession earns about £200 a week, which is, of course, £10,000 a year. Semi-skilled labour, which is this sort of work, earns about £275 a week. And the fully skilled lot, well, they earn about £385 a week, which is, of course, just over £19,500 a year. Adrian, thanks very much indeed. Now... <coughs> The problem is, you're actually paid piecework, which means the faster you work, the more money you earn. Now, this is the good stuff I get. Just over three pence for each one I make. Adrian's on the cheaper stuff. Which, frankly, isn't fair. So I put a lot of time and effort into this. Voila, a masterpiece. And that'll only make me one pen. Long day? Long day? Yeah, do you think you're all great? I don't think they do. I'll keep your voice down if I was. You're all on kettles boiled. I'll have lemon milk. Just over there. Oh. Lovely. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks to everyone at uh, Cradley Castings for all that. Now, uh, the French managed it.